Welcome back, everyone, to Cube's coverage here in Las Vegas. We are on the ground. We are getting all the action as we unpack the four days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage here in the Cube. I'm John Furrier, your host of the Cube. Mark Terenzoni is here. Jace, uh, GM, I was going to say Vice President, GM of Security Services at AWS. Um, you're running the security business. Great to see you. Thanks for coming back on the Cube. Always a good, John, good always time. always a pleasure. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we love the um, the security angle of AWS. I remember back when I first met the the chief security officer um, uh, with Andy Jassy in New York, like 2015. At that time, the narrative was the cloud's not secure, and and at that time, it was like, no, no, we actually actually have the best security posture because of the scale and all those things. Again, fast forward today, obviously, best security uh, hardened, everything's rocking, but there's still threats. Customers have connected to the cloud, either with an on-prem or edge to the cloud, so they have challenges. So it's a constant battle of managing the inbound threats and uh, and stuff going on and, and, and with the security attacks, managing it, investigating it. It's what you guys do. Give us the state of the art right now in terms of cloud security services. What's the landscape look like right now? And what are some of the things you guys are doing that's different? I was get the scale. Take us through some of the current situation. Sure, well, we had a couple of announcements this week, so I'll probably start with that. Um, Guard Duty, our threat detection service, announced attack sequencing capabilities. So they've always been able to use machine learning to understand what threats are happening in, are for customers in their environment. But what they're doing now is they're really piecing those together in in uh, the form of TTPs and show, highlighting to customers what may be a benign single threat is really tied to a potential risk or attack. And uh, you know we don't expect there to be too many of these firing, but it's going to give a much more of a fidelity, higher fidelity view of what's happening in the customer's environment. That's on the threat detection side. Um, on the investigation side, uh, Security Lake, as you know, we launched about 18 months ago, is really uh, a capability that we put together for customers to bring all of the security telemetry in one place in a normalized format. And this is a really important component because um, before even launching Security Lake, we founded um, OCSF, or Open Cybersecurity Schema Format, with a number of leading security vendors to help industry organize security data in a way that analytics can run at scale on top of that data. Um, prior to having a unified schema, you know, customers would have to piece this together. And what, what we really found is that customers have security teams they're really good at understanding and, and remediating threats. They're not really good at big data problems. <laughs> and we were forcing them to become big data experts. So we've taken that burden or undifferentiated heavy lifting off of the customer's back, organize the data in a format that they can go run their use cases and analytics, and then partnered with a number of security vendors that rely on this data but don't need to ingest it. They can actually query it directly on top of the lake. Which leads me to the second announcement, which is which we're really excited about is a direct integration with Security Lake with Open Search. So Open Search had been a partner of Security Lakes for over a year, but the use case was ingest all the data from Security Lake into Open Search, and then customers could analyze it in the Open Search interface. What we've announced uh, this week is what we call zero ETL or direct query. So the customers no longer need to ingest the data. The data stays in, in Security Lake, and they can query it directly as needed, relatively high performance, and then analyze the chunks of data that they need. This does a couple things. It opens up the aperture for the amount of data that customers can actually analyze and have visibility on. But the second piece is it dramatically reduces the cost because you're not fully ingesting for data that you may or may not need to query. Well, cost and hassle too, because you've got data movement costs, right? And you also have ingestion of flow, all this new stuff you need to integrate in. Correct. So that's the benefit, there's two benefits, cost. Yes. And so you get access to the, the data, all the data, but then, wait a minute, there's the right data, I gotta now run stuff on those jobs on, I gotta run jobs on that to figure out where it goes. Or, or even what the format of it is. Yeah. yeah. So with OCSF, you know, the other the other side benefit is really on the data science or and machine learning and analytics side, they can start to build their own content and detections because they already understand the format mm -hmm. before they have sample data, and and it really reduces that whole development cycle for our partners, for our customers, and certainly for AWS. So just to get the news trade, we covered on SiliconAngle.com, so you can, people can go check it out. Uh, Sunday ahead of the of, of the event, you guys announced. The Security Incident Response Service, 
Correct. That's guard duty, and then the security hub are involved in that piece, right? That's the kind of the one service, and then obviously the open search. Yes, yes. Um, so that's part of our pro professional services uh, offerings. So we've, you know, for a long time helped customers understand potential incidents and risks, mostly in a reactive manner. Mm -hmm. Now this this brings the proactive aspects of to the security posture to the forefront. So this team will go in and actually help operationalize yeah. security events using guard duty, security up, really whatever tools the customer has. Yeah. And many of them will be third parties over time as well. Yeah. And and filtering out those unnecessary logs too is another benefit. Again, we, you guys, so let's get into the whole um, problem statement. Rapid detection, rapid response has always been a big thing. This is what people want. Yep. Um, talk about that aspect to it because the surface area is now the cloud, it's everything. Everything is disturbed. There's no perimeter, obviously. We don't I mean that's been right. it's not even discussion anymore. But like, the importance of incident response planning becomes big. Specifically, what do you do? Yeah, like take us through that yeah. process. And what so, are the customers challenged with as you talk to customers? Are they up to their eyeballs in sim migrations? Is it like what's going on in the customer? I, I guess yeah. Back. So this is a complex area, right? The the data is growing. Uh, exponentially, uh, you're right. It's not just in one place. It's it's on prem. It's in SaaS applications. It's in the cloud infrastructure. And uh, you know, phase one for this is making sure customers understand what they're running, what data is necessary to help them when they have an issue or an incident, and how can they organize that data in an efficient, effective manner. You mentioned SIM, right? And I think I think that landscape is changing a little bit historically. Many sims were on-prem, mm -hmm. you know, they were, you know, software sales and customers, you know, really managed the infrastructure. I think you look at today and beyond, most of those uh, implementations are happening in the cloud. They're either cloud native tools, software solutions, or instantiations of those tools on the cloud. So the landscape for those vendors is changing because now instead of just selling software, they're actually selling infrastructure with their software to provide outcomes for their customers. So that changes a little bit. And the dynamics of that uh, plays very well into why we built Security Lake. To take that undifferentiated heavy lifting off of the partners and the customers, mm -hmm. gather all that data that you need, but do it in a very low cost manner. It's stored in S3. It's stored in the customer's account. So the customers really have the controls over what their life cycle is, how they manage it, what aperture they have, how much data, what, how they filter it. But you're right, when the biggest challenge a customer has is when something does go bump in the night and they don't have the data they need to investigate or analyze it or the skills they ha need, that's when it really becomes a challenge. Yeah, so we've covered the Secure Lake before. We love, love your focus area. Um, one of the questions that comes up is how do I integrate a robust identity management system into this? And you guys have that in there. Um, that mitigates unnecessary access, right? So you have identity ac and access is another key variable. Take us through why, what you guys do there, what's the impact of the customer? Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. I mean, if you really unpeel the the threats and the historical um, uh, you know, potential attacks customers face, a large percentage of them can be traced back to credential misuse and, and identity, you know, misuse. And, and it really gets down to least privilege access, right? And this is one of the things we, we really try to help customers with is identifying what access is needed and what isn't and getting to that least privileged yeah. state to reduce that blast radius and risk. We also have some tools like, yes. uh, you know, Access Analyzer that goes and looks at what um, the roles and, and the users have access to and helps customers, you know, identify gaps and areas that they can reduce that risk and, yeah. and exposure. You mentioned blast radius, which is a term that's used also in Amazon as well as the industry. How do you minimize that blast radius? Just getting down to the primitives? Is there techniques that Amazon deploys? Um, take us through, because that's yeah. really what everyone tries to get to. So it, it, I think it starts with identity, but it, but it also goes to the perimeter and the, in, in, in the networking segmentation. So we have a number of capabilities also in that place to help customers really segment, you know, maybe their production applications and lock down the access, make sure there's no um, unnecessarily access to the internet, you know, where there doesn't need to be and where there needs to be, make sure that, that you know, those are really protected, you know, ports and we understand what's going on in those, uh, in those and we're monitoring them on a regular basis. 
Can you talk about the importance of incident, incident response and planning? Because, again, some people kind of wait to the breach, and then they do the postmortems, they go and do all the reporting, but the importance of the planning. 100%. You, you have to have a plan. It starts with the data. It also might start with partners. Like, who do you have on retainer? Who do you have that can help you when you need it the most, right? Not all companies have, you know, mature security teams. Those that do, in many cases, already have plans in place, and they're well, well aware of what the requirements and necessary needs are. But many customers, you know, aren't necessarily secure, you know, have a large security team, so they're going to rely on partners to help in this area, and that's why one of the reasons we announced what we did at this uh, at the show to help customers not only prepare but respond, and and more importantly, respond before it really becomes a big event or issue for the customer. So, why is the security lake important as this central hub, and how does it enhance the security? and the data management piece of it. Talk about that. Yeah, we, we, we take the data management right off the table. Um, we built Security Lake in a way- You say take off the table, what do you mean take off the table? So, so we do all that work for the customers. Okay, so so you, 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 in a single location, click a button and tell us what accounts you care about and what data sources you care about, and we will automatically take them from you know the generation spots and bring them into Security Lake convert them to OCSF format, write them to Parquet with um, iceberg table format on them. So they become uh, operationalized, mm -hmm. you know, without any work the customer has to do. And we do it at the same price as if the customer wanted to provision those logs and do this work themselves. Now, that's not everything, because now <laughs> I need to bring my on-prem data, I gotta bring my SaaS applications, maybe my uh, other cloud workloads. So we make a provision for customers to bring all that data in as well. You know, Mark, I got to go off the reservation a little bit here and talk about the S3 announcements here at, at reInvent. S3 table buckets, you mentioned Parquet. Yeah. Open table formats, um, S3 metadata. This is going to add more value to the lake. Data. 100%. Lake. We, we already do that today, so we put it, we put everything in Iceberg, but but now you're going to have it at the at the primitives of S3, which is really, in my opinion, where it should be, right? You know, these are going to be access patterns um, they're open standards and, you know, we support open standards in many yeah. ways, but that's, that's actually going to help my job because <laughs> they're going to take some of that work off, off the table for me. Yeah. S3 has got so much goodness in there. We we're just talking with uh, Com Vault, one of the partners, um, and versioning huge feature. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The, that's that critical, critical is, feature on rollbacks, yeah. resilience. Yeah. Um, we, we have those as part of security Lake too. Because you, you you need to be able to do that, especially as open, OCSF or open cybersecurity, it, it evolves, right? We're now version 1.3. And by the way, I should tell you, we just moved the project to the Linux Foundation as well. So it's going to get hmm. more momentum. It's going to get more discoverable. And you as an Amazon help. Web Services or your group is involved? Well, in it was already open source, o open source yeah. to, before, but we were hosting it in Apache. So the group, which we're part of, uh, you know, decided to make the move to Linux Foundation. Just curious, why was that decision made, you know? Yeah, it was uh, for a couple of reasons. One is that we had a lot of experience with other projects with Linux Foundation, namely Open Open Search, and we had a really good, um, you know, uh, outcome associated with that move, so that was that was one of the major factors. But really, help you Their know governance get, is good too. Get, the govern the governance, uh, the structure. You know, we're going to keep the same governing body, but the structure and the yeah. discoverability for our developers, and and it's a and it's a place where they already go today. So it's yeah. really we think it's going to help. It's fun to see the Linux Foundation just continue to do such a great job. They've they've really shepherded many projects. Exactly, and, and they do new things. Yeah, they're not stuck in what they think they're really open they're such a great community and people have you know there's a lot there have been a lot of successes there and by the way right. ventures have come out of there too i know that's very controversial to talk about, but i think it's great yeah you know that you can see that innovation coming out of the community yeah we love that and ocsf is still relatively young but we've got over 900 contributors across 200 plus organizations all the major cloud vendors all the major security vendors government agencies and and customers and uh, you know what yeah. you'll find is that Many of the security ISVs are recognizing how, how robust it is, and they're moving their backends yeah, yeah. to OCSF. I mean, there's always been that debate. I've always said open always wins, but you've you got to keep the lights on. Turn the lights on, see everything. If the collective intelligence of the community can see all the security data, a lot of good stuff can be happening. Yeah, people, the bad guys see it too, but this, like, yeah, hey, let's just lay a, level the playing field. 
for sure. And we're and with this, we're making it a lot easier for the outcomes for customers with those tools. You think of think of the scenario where a major ISV that has been working machine learning on their data sets for ten years, they've done a fantastic job. But now that we normalized OCSF, those same analytics in machine learning uh, models can be applied to other sources yeah. and deliver outcomes rapidly. Yeah, and that's the that's just the value of standing on the shoulders of giants before you, which is the ethos of open source. Um, talk about the business that you got running on right now. So tell us about the health of the business. What's your focus? What are some of the targets you're going after? What what's the execution look like? Yeah, so so obviously we're focused on protecting AWS workloads. You know, uh, Security Lake goes beyond that, but Detective does uh, AWS workloads, and really giving customers that simplified capability at any scale that they can turn our services on, immediately get value, and more importantly, operationalize them without any burden or heavy lifting on their side. We really want to enable our customers' limited resources on the security side to focus on the things that matter the most. It's taking our signal, marrying it with their knowledge of their workloads and applications, and prioritizing the right yeah. things to remediate. You know, one of the things I'm seeing this year at reInvent that's kind of obvious now, um, we kind of saw it, we saw it, we've talked about this in the past on theCUBE, and, and I think we might even talked about it, but I think it's, it's been there, but now it's more obvious than ever. And that AWS is operating at such scale, you have certain advantages, it's rarefied air in a way. You, not that many people are there. Yeah. And you see things that other people don't see. And the applications that are at that area are scaled apps, um, uh, what came out of COVID with Connect. I mean, who would have thought that Amazon would be in the call center <laughs> as a service business? Well, well, that was born out of the benefit of what they were already doing internally. This is what the Andy Jassy playbook was for AWS to begin with. Hey, we're doing it internally. Let's expose that service to the public. Security has that same vibe, at least I feel that way. Share your thoughts on this because as you get more expertise, you see more things operating at scale, that will allow you to bring certain solutions to the customer. 100%, and you know, we're seeing, under the covers, you know, we are able to identify threat intelligence across a wide range of data sources that we apply into our products, right? You know, I think we've made some announcement recently around um, you know, MadPod and some of the, the things we get with that. And you know, certainly on the DNS side, we, we get to see things probably a little bit before you know, they become on a threat list. So we're applying the, those, yeah. that knowledge at scale into our products that ultimately deliver better outcomes for our customers in the security realm. Yeah, you know, Mark, another area I want to touch on, I know it's a little bit maybe off topic relative to your business, but it's more categorical in the industry, is that with open data and open open source and exposing more and connecting people together, I mean, always, oh, people always shared information, but now as the scale comes up, one other trend that's happened this year is that there's been much more of a law enforcement leaning into taking out um, groups that are organized versus just breaking them up. They just reconstitute. Yeah, actually putting them in jail, like taking them off the streets. There's a whole law enforcement lift that we're seeing in that market that's causing disruption. I mean, these are organized mafias, these yeah. like, hackers, these criminals. You know, in many cases, they're going into offices, uh, you know, that look a lot like, uh, you know, the offices that we go into, and yeah. they're very organized, yeah. and they share information. You know, historically, they've shared information, I think, better than the good guys. And, and I think with the advent of OCSF and... Uh, our ability to share information at scale with, you know, other companies and teams, you know, get, like you said earlier, kind of levels the playing field. And yeah. uh, and I think the deterrent now is that, you know, in many cases, these groups were were really not being persecuted. Yeah. And, and that's changing. And I think, um, you know, within our country and other uh, countries, we're creating these mechanisms to really go after these yeah. uh, after these uh, actors, for sure. Final question for you. Highlight some partnerships and customers you that, that um, exemplify the relationship that you guys want to have with the marketplace. Talk about partners first and then customer. Yeah, yeah so so uh, partners have always been part of the ethos for us and, and it's extremely important, especially with Security Lake. I mean, we, we almost think of it as like a middleware where you know our partners feed sources into us and our partners put analytics on top of us. So one uh, one recent announcement that I'll, I'll talk about was Splunk um, around what they call federated analytics. So historically, you would have to ingest all your data into Splunk and then run your analytics locally. Um, it, the analytics are fantastic. The workflow is fantastic. 
but it becomes cost prohibitive. So customers would have to make some choices. Um, with this recent announcement, they're able to federate that on top of Security Lake, open up their aperture, and provide more outcomes for customers without having to bring the ingestion in. So that was a really exciting announcement. I think you'll see a lot more in that area from the SIM XDR vendors on top of things like Security Lake that you know really reduce the cost and friction, but deliver more value. Um, from a customer standpoint, um, you know, several customers have, have come out recently and, and endorsed uh, Security Lake and the value it brings to them. Uh, you know, I'm amazed uh, to see how quickly customers were able to adopt and operationalize. So that's, that's been really an exciting journey. Well, we're going to have a lot of coverage this year on security. Obviously, Red RSA, we're there every year. Black Hat is a new event for us. Obviously, Reinforce, your uh, your conference. I think you guys still do Reinforce. Yes, we do. We'll be, in, right? we'll be in June in uh, Philadelphia. We'll be, yeah, so we'll keep an eye on that. But in general, security is part of the data equation. Um, seeing Gen AI being a, a nice lift there to help take advantage of some of that stuff, too. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, my, my teams have been uh, been doing some experimentation with that on top of Security Lake data. And... Uh, you know, it's it's really encouraging. You know, I think it's going to really help the analysts get to the root cause very quickly. <laughs> Those root cause analysis get done much faster. 100%. Okay, final, final questions, because it popped in my head. I want to ask you. I know you got to go, but yeah. um, what are you uh, most excited about this year from an innovation standpoint or in your purview around security, security lake at the, uh, obviously the news here at reInvent? Um, if you could share, you know, one or two highlights of, to customers or anyone watching, like yeah, the, yeah. I, the innovations that are getting you really jazzed about this market. Right? I think I think a couple things. One is the incident response capability to help our customers with expertise on the ground as they need them is uh, is has been is going to be fantastic for them to get to that root cause. I think the second thing is you, you've heard a lot of things around Gen AI, and uh, you know I think the code aspects of that in being able to take help customers by taking vulnerabilities and reducing the friction to patch them and reduce their surface area risk by applying those code capabilities to automatically generate code with the developer and the customer side really just has to review it and check it in. I think it's going to reduce a lot of friction and, and also reduce the risk for customers. Mark, thanks for coming back on theCUBE. General Manager of Security Service at ABS. A lot of, a lot of work to do still, but you guys are 100%. plugging away, pedaling as fast as you can, as they say, <laughs> bringing the goodness. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thanks, John. All Always right. a pleasure. All right. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE here at AWS reInvent, our 12th year. I can't believe it's been 12 years. We're here every year getting all the action. It's like holiday time. The gifts keep on giving. The announcements are, are plentiful, and people can't wait to get their hands on, on the technology. Uh, more coverage after this short break.